The new AIDD definition manual has a number of things that are valuable for special education teachers. One um, is, of course, the definition itself um, and the fact that we are now using intellectual disability rather than mental retardation, as well as a, a very detailed description on that diagnostic process, which is important for teachers to understand, particularly in terms of eligibility for special education. Uh, another thing, which is in the chapter on education, is a five-step process for designing educational plans um, that, that uh, reinforces the notion of um, the identification of supports that, that students need in order to achieve their outcomes and in their individualized educational plan. Um, also, characteristics of educational practices are described in that same chapter on education. Um, and finally, there's a chapter that addresses individuals with intellectual disability and higher IQs. And that's a new addition to the manual. And I think that gives more depth to um, maybe the current research on this group of individuals and their situation in society. Um, and in many cases, their poverty, or their lack of um, their lack of finishing school, uh, their lack of jobs. Uh, so it does demonstrate some of the difficulties that many of these individuals are in, as well as give some description on their ways of um, their ways of making social responses and how that sometimes gets them into trouble. So I think that that chapter gives um, some nice detail that's quite relevant to teachers. The current federal law is referred to as IDEA, or Individuals um, with Disabilities Education Act. Um, there are a lot of commonalities between IDEA and the AIDD definition system. The first one has to do with the importance of providing needed supports to individuals. That is, you need to identify what the supports are an individual um, with disabilities should have. Um, and those need to be put into place. Of course, those supports are related to achieving their educational plan. Both the law idea and the current manual emphasize that supports are very broad. They can include people providing assistance. They can include professionals like um, related services staff, occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech and language pathologists, they also certainly can include the provision of, um, of uh, specialized instruction um, and also supervised work experiences. So there's a whole array of supports that need to be identified and matched to the child needs. So the law and the manual are in total agreement on that. Another area of agreement is the importance of educating individuals with disabilities alongside non-disabled peers. That is not separating them for their education. And the, uh, uh, the manual um, on intellectual disabilities also provides um, a clear uh, value in the importance of inclusion. Um, and finally, uh, the law places great emphasis on um, accurate diagnosis of disability um, in terms of the process of finding someone eligible or not eligible for special ed services. And likewise, the manual provides the guidelines, the most current research-based guidelines on how to diagnose an intellectual disability. There are several best practices in special education that are included in the new AIDD manual. Uh, the first one is that educating students with intellectual disabilities um, must be done alongside their peers who don't have disabilities. Um, but at the same time, we need to have the necessary supports in place for their learning success. And the second thing would be that Teams, educational teams must aim for skills that, it, that are determined to be relevant um, for the individual student. 
not only by the educational team, but also by the student and the student's care providers. The third thing um, is that we need to provide the kinds of supports that have been identified as being needed to make the learning successful. And finally, the skills that are taught need to be ones that are relevant at two points in life, now and in adulthood.